He's bringing me in. Here we go. Whew. I'm excited. I love dipping and pouring glaze. It's fun. We make a mess. Hey, hey everybody. We live? We ready to go? Ready to do this? We are going to be dipping and pouring glazes today. Day five. Well, one, right? Is five. That'd be 10. We're not on day 10. We don't have 10 days scheduled for Clay Share Con. I don't know if I can do 10 days in a row. I don't think I can survive that. But we are doing five days. And then I think Drew is going to do something tomorrow to make up for the bad bandwidth we had earlier when he was trying to do his glaze Q&A. So I think that's going to happen tomorrow. We'll get details during the broadcast. We'll make sure we get all that stuff for you guys. So we are dipping and pouring glaze, which is Drew is talking at the same time. <laughs> is he on? Is he on now? Or what's happening? Kev, what you got happening? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. All right, so here is, so here's where I usually film, over here. And then right next to me is my door to my kiln shed, right? Here's my lovely five inch Bailey extruder. I love my Bailey extruder. Pretty awesome, right? That's right there. And then uh, over here, that it, I had to move Instagram, I had to move the phone, is my part of my glaze wall. I have one, two, three, four, five sections of these pantry units. So this is one unit to here, right? I have five of them full of glaze, although only two are full length. One's a, two others are a half and the other's a third because it goes up my stairs. So I've posted pictures about my glaze storage situation before for my brush on glazes. Now here we have on the floor, my dip and pour glazes. And I have some that store here. And then I have a glazing table over there that is about four by eight. That's about how big my table is. And under it, it stores 10 five gallon buckets of glaze. The five gallon buckets are these here, this size right here, five gallons of glaze right there. And these little guys, they hold five pounds of glaze from Clayscapes Pottery or just over a gallon of glaze. And that's what's in these right here. So I stack them two on each other and they scoot up under my glaze wall. And then the rest of these that are now strewn out everywhere are usually under my glaze table. Currently I have uh, 10, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, three different dippable glazes and that's too many. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not too many. It's not too many. Um, I'll pull you all back so you over here on Instagram so we can come back to the, the action. Um, so dipping and pouring is, um, Drew is going in and out and he's still talking. So we have that on Facebook that Drew is talking. Kathleen, um, do you have two broadcasts going at the same time, hon? Maybe that's what's going on. So Diana has 15 buckets. You're catching me. <laughs> yeah, Drew's not even connected. To Drew's me. not connected to us right now, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. So uh, I'm gonna show you dipping and pouring. You know, I first learned when to glaze by dipping and pouring. It's just a little faster and it's a totally different method of glazing. Some potters like it, some potters hate it. It's entirely up to, you know, each individual and what they like. And I think it's always something to try and see how you feel about it. If you want to get really fast results, dipping and pouring is the way to go. Most production potters do dipping and pouring because we're in, we, we have a volume. We only really have a day to glaze and you have to glaze a full kiln's worth. Sometimes you have to do two glaze kilns a week to keep up with production. When I was doing it full time, um, I was every week selling out as many pots as I could make. So I was always replenishing my stock. So I was always making. And you have to work fast to do that, which means you don't get to spend a lot of time doing the carving like I do or the inlay like I like to do. So the dipping and pouring um, is, a, is a little different when you're really trying to get volume, not, not sacrificing quality, but volume. So this right here is a dip and pour glaze. This is my cobblestone, which will be out from Clayscapes, I think in May. It's a beautiful gray glaze. This, this is it on Laguna 90, which is a dark clay. And I have on the rim put my spearmint, which is currently out. You can get my, sp my spearmint from Clayscapes Pottery. So all the glazes I'm gonna use right now are either my own glazes that Clayscapes now or will be selling or Clayscapes glazes. 
So this also it are two glazes, and I just gotta adjust my lighting over here, that are mine. This is my spearmint, and then this is lake blue, that right there, spearmint, lake blue on Laguna 60. So you see it on another clay. And this has been dipped like this, and then turned over and dipped like this into the bucket. So that's how I glaze these. And we're gonna glaze uh, mugs and maybe a bowl and some other stuff. All right, here is a dipped cup we have right here. These are also Clayscapes glazes. This is their, uh, mm, 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 mm. is this the Bushwick? I always get Bushwick and Flatbush confused because they both have the name, the word bush in it. And one is a like green, like an acid green and the other is yellow. So Drew will tell me, your screen is blurry. Let's see, it's, I'm moving a lot. We're sharp. We're sharp, so I think it's your screen. So we have Park Slope on the outside. We have, I believe this is Bushwick on the inside and then I dipped it in cream and then I fired it. And those of you on YouTube, I have a class where I actually show you how to glaze this exact cup. So we glaze this cup there. And I'm pretty sure I put it up on clayshare.com too. It'll be a free class. So, all right, what else do we got? Sunset Park is the orange right here. So Sunset Park is another Clayscapes glaze. It's this gorgeous orange. I like to put the cream on top and then I call it creamsicle. And I just love the way these work together. Really pretty glazes. They have this Brooklyn line. That's what these are from. And they are a rainbow of colors. It's really gorgeous. Now the Brooklyn glazes are more of an opaque glazes. They're not translucent. So they don't go great on texture. They will hide all your texture. But these right here, you will love. Jennifer, the aqua. Oh goodness, the aqua glaze is so yummy. I love it too. Yeah, it's great. Uh, what else do I have to show you? Oh, I put cream on everything. Here is their butter. This glaze is called butter with cream on top. If you're looking for a super soft yellow, look at the difference. We have this egg yolk yellow right here, kind of an intense yellow. And then this is this soft yellow, very soft, very pretty. Now, what else do I have? I got more stuff, don't worry. Ah. My spearmint and my lake blue on B-Mix, because I know you want to see it on a light clay. So here's the spearmint, lake blue over, where they overlap, you get this yumminess happening. So that's an example of those glazes. And again, my blue and the cobblestone gray will be out in May. Spearmint's out now. All right, let's make some, let's make some stuff. Oh, and uh, I just have a little Brighton Beach. That's another glaze that Clayscapes makes with cream on top. So we have that right there. So let's do it, let's do it to it. All right, so if you're gonna make dip and pour glazes, you have a couple options. You can get a book on making glazes, right? And you can have a recipe and you can mix from that recipe. You can get a recipe online. You can get my recipes on clayshare.com under resources and you can mix up a glaze from there. So once you have your recipe, you need to get your ingredients. So you'll buy them by the pound. Now. Glaze recipes are measured in grams. Chemicals and materials are sold in pounds. What? I don't know. I don't know why they don't make life easier and measure it all out to the same, but they don't. So here's what I'm gonna tell you. 453 grams is a pound. So when you're making a glaze and you need a thousand grams of a material, you could get two pounds, but you need to get three because you need to go over. So you'll need three pounds of material. So what you'll do is you'll look at your recipe. You'll total up the amount of grams you have in that particular material. So I need 2000 grams of this material if you're gonna make a five gallon bucket, right? So a five gallon bucket makes you use 10,000 grams. So five gallon bucket equals 10,000 grams. I do have a class on mixing making and understanding glazes. So I talk about all this in depth. We do it out on a sheet. I believe I write it all out. So 10,000 grams is in your bucket. So when you see 20% on a glaze recipe, I need a pen. I'm going to write some math. I'm going to do some math for you. Hold on. I'm grabbing a piece of paper I have here. See, I thought I was just going to glaze, but I'm going to give you a little. So you're having trouble getting your glaze mixed right. Uh, Diana, tell me what's going on. I'll try to help you. So 
are these available only in dippable or brushable? My glazes are all available in dippable. We don't have them in brushable yet. Okay. Ready? Let's do it. Let's do a little math. So say you need some silica, which is glass former, right? 20%. And then you need some EPK, 10. This is not a real glaze. This is me making stuff up. We're just going to put some materials on there, right? So 10, 20. Let's say you need some Minspar. So you need 40 of that. You would never have that. But we're going to do it for this. And let's say you want some Frit. 31.95, which again would never happen. So 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, we 10 more. And then you have some zinc, 10. So your glazes will add up to 100. So here's how it works. I'm actually doing the glaze class, didn't think I would. You have your materials right here and they usually will add up to 100, right? Then you have your colorants. So I'm gonna add some copper, one, and then uh, maybe some cobalt. 0.5, right? So those don't count in your 100 total. The colorants don't count, or and sometimes the opacifiers don't either. Like your depends. So what you do is, if you want to get to 10,000 grams, we got 100 grams right here. You need to move your decimal place two. So you got to move it to the right two. So you add two zeros: 2,000, 1,000, 4,000. 3,000, 10,000, total of one th total of 10,000 right there. You also have to do it on your colorants too. So that's 150. Remember, this is not a real glaze. This is, um, this is magic, awesome, not real glaze. If only it existed because it's magic, awesome, not real glaze. All right. So you have your measurements here for a 10,000 gram batch. So that's how you measure what you need to buy. If you want to make half a bucket, you just divide your numbers in half. So this is for a five gallon right here. If you want to make a 2.5 gallon, which is half, you just divide everything in half. So that's 1,500, 2,000, 1,500, 500, and then 50 and 25. So do you see this everyone? So we got all the numbers, all the awesome math. So you got it? Yay! They know, <laughs> well, yeah, patent pending for this. And I did see someone comment about my Clay Share Con shirt. It'll be here tomorrow. So maybe I'll pop in just to show everybody it. So this is how you figure out what materials you need, the quantity you need. Remember, 453 grams equals one pound. 453 grams equals a pound. So that's how you get your ingredients. Or you go to Clayscape's Pottery and say, I want five pounds of Jesse's Chun. And they sell it to you. It comes to your house in dry form. And then, although my Chun is also brushable, so you can brush it too. Once you get your dry glaze, you need to mix it through. You'll need a sieve. I have, I use these. This is an 80 mesh sieve. You want to add your water. So you're just going to add your water to it until it, until, see, until everything's just wet and it's mucky. You mix it up, you know, and then you're going to add a little more water to it till it's about a very thick cream. And then you're going to put it through a sieve, pour it through this and sieve it through a five gallon bucket. You're gonna wear gloves. If you're measuring your ingredients, you need to wear a respirator and safety glasses, right? You wanna do all those safety things. And while you're mixing up glaze, you should wear your respirator too. On YouTube, I do have a mixing clayscapes glaze class. And it's also on Clayshare too, don't I? Mixing, so you'll put it through here and here's a tip. When you're sieving your, hold this up please. When you are sieving through your 80 mesh sieve, uh, and I tried to add these to the Amazon shop. I can't get them. I tried. So you you could use your hand in the glove. I wear gloves when I do this. Uh, here's one. Right here. Dish, dish washing gloves. Right here. So I use these to mix up my glaze. And what I will do is I'll pour it in here. And then I use one of these little scrubber brushes. They're like a dollar. And you 
grind it through and you just keep doing and you're going to sieve it through twice and you're going to check your thickness. Now if you're using a hydrometer you're going to measure your specific gravity and that'll let you know if the glaze has one. Here are the hydrometers that I use in my studio. I have these great big long ones but you can get smaller ones and the measurement will show on here and it'll float in your glaze and you read it. So whatever line you can read that's just above the glaze is what it's at for specific gravity. Most glazes will have a specific gravity listed on them and that just means how much water you add. So you, you'll just do that. So you have the six inch little ones. I have the giant long ones. The respirator is you want a P100 cartridge. I use one by North Industries. 3M makes them as well. I'll grab mine. Is this my, is this my, that's my vapor one. Where's my, all right. I have got, let's see if my vapor one. I don't know where I put my vapor one. I'll have to look. This is basically like this. It's in the Amazon shop. <laughs> so, all right. <sighs> Do beer and wine making hydrometers will work, I believe. Are they, th my tall one just, it just reads different. So instead of um, 1.6, it might be 16. So mine will read 16 instead of 1.6. So I just know mine reads that way. So it's, it just reads a little different, but. And Drew sells hydrometers. Yes, you can get one. You could get them everywhere. So once you make your glaze, you want to use your glaze, right? So let's go ahead and do some glazing. All right, difference in glazes. Can you make a dippable glaze brushable? You sure can. If you add some CMC gum to it, you can brush it on. You'll do some tests with it. It might be the thickness you need, it might not. So you can make them that way. You just got to do some formulating with it. So I'm trying to catch up. How often do you change the cartridge? That's a good question. Um, they have a recommended life on the package. So go ahead and read that. Depends on the one you buy, but I change mine out usually every six months. And you will notice I keep mine sealed in a plastic bag that it comes in. They all come in this because your respirator is working even when you're not using it. So if you have it just sitting out on the counter, it's working, it's, it's filtering and you don't want it doing that. You want to have it take a break, right? So the beer hydrometers are not the same, Drew says. They're not, so don't get those. <laughs> if I'm doing it by eye, how thick it should be, I'll tell you because that's how I learned. I learned at the University of North Carolina, Wilmington, go Seahawks. And North Carolina has a long, folk tradition of making pottery. A lot of folk potters do not use hydrometers. We do not use them when I, because most folk potters are production potters. So we don't have that high tech stuff. Just don't have it. So I did not learn specific gravity measurements when I was learning. So you mix it up and we will do this and you do the fingernail dip test where you dip your hand in the glaze and when you pull it out, you wanna be able to see the indent where your fingernail starts at the nail bed, but you don't wanna actually see through the glaze to your finger. So that's how you do it. And that's how I still do it to this day. I do not use my hydrometer. I have it, it's, you see how hard it was for me to get out of the case? That's because it lives in its case and I don't take it out unless someone messages me and says, what specific gravity do you use your chun at? And then I mix up my chun to where I dip my fingers and it's the consistency I usually use. And then I put the hydrometer in. So that's how I mix. Scientifically, it's not the best maybe. I just learned that way. And potters have been doing it that way for centuries. So, you know, take your pick, do what you want, right? Alrighty, let's see, let's, let's glaze some stuff. Grab my mug with chun and black under it. I didn't, I might be able to send Kevin. You know the mug, the short fat one? It was sitting on the counter yesterday. I think Leanne used it. And I don't know if it got washed and put back in the cabinet, but could you see if it's around? We're gonna send Kevin in to look. We will go top, uh, let's switch, to, everybody else, we're gonna switch to top view because we're gonna mix up and do some glazes, okay? So we're gonna, you're gonna start looking at my feet. And the, and the tape we have on the cord for the, uh, there we go. 
you guys coming in. All right, so I have got, you're gonna have to mix up, every time you use your dip and pour glazes, you're gonna have to mix them up. It's just how it is. And I have a drill bit, so this is just a plaster mixing bit that you can get at the hardware store. And I have it on my drill. This is a Sears drill. They don't, it's a Craftsman. I don't know if they still even make this one, but my mom got it for me for Christmas about 10 years ago. And I love it. It's a great drill. Awesome. So you'll want that to mix your glaze up every time you go to use it because glaze will settle out. And I see there's recipes asking for my chun. So since Clayscapes and I have partnered and they make and sell my chun, I cannot give the recipe out anymore. But I do have a class on Clayshire on making and using glazes and it might be the glaze I show you how to make. So we'll put that out there like that. So we're going to glaze and we're going to use my spearmint. And I have a full bucket. And I mean full. <laughs> and I'm going to mix this and do dipping and pouring. I will zoom you all in so you can see a little better and I'm going to get the folks on Instagram. You might notice I'm in these lovely chicken rubber boots, my little cute chicken boots, because when I glaze I tend to make a mess. I do. I think most potters do. So after you mix your glaze up, you might use it right away. Oftentimes I won't use my glaze right away. Often what will happen is I will have a day of glaze making and then I will sit it to the side and I will come in, we'll zoom in on that, hopefully the focus is good. So I will have a day of glaze making, scooch in, and then it'll sit and it'll settle. And I don't know if you can tell, but the top of this right here, there's a bunch of water sitting on the top. So we need to mix it up and that's what we use our drill bit for. Ah, Kevin got that mug. Here you go. So here, oh, it's hot. Was it in the dishwasher? Yep. Woohoo! So here is my Chun Blue on top of Clayscape's Pottery Pitch Black. Do you see what I was talking about with the opal essence? Let's see if we get that. Hopefully that's nice and crisp. Do you see how opal-y this looks? That's because the Chun Blue is on top of the Pitch Black. So yummy. It's, it's crazy good. My eldest daughter saw this mug, claimed it, and it was gone. And that's it. And every time I make these, they are gone. They don't stay in the, anywhere. They just go. So try this combo. You will love it. <gasps> what came in the mail? No way. Bring it. Where's my other one? I got two. Should I change? You guys, don't look. I'll change in the studio. Toss. Like, I'm going to take off my clothes right in front of y'all. No, look what came. Look at that. Can you see? Can you go back? Woohoo! No, they can see it. It's my Clay Share Con t-shirt. Finally came. I will change for the giveaway. I'm gonna wear my baseball one though. I got another one. I got I got two. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, that was exciting, wasn't it? <laughs> Yay! It finally came today. Yay! All right. Let's mix this up. So you're just gonna stir it up till all the water that's risen to the top and all the materials that have settled to the bottom are mixed together. Now remember, don't dip it in the bucket. I know, that would have been bad. Remember, glaze is a suspension, not a solution. That means the glaze materials are suspended in the water. They don't dissolve, except for salts, which do dissolve, but just just in your mind, think about glaze as a suspension. So the particles will settle, so we have to stir them every time. Oh, it's gonna be loud, sorry. So that feels like we're pretty well mixed. And during a glazing session, you will have to keep remixing your glaze. It's still gonna settle. It's still gonna happen. It's sad. 
All right, let's check it. So let's see where we're at for thickness. Dip. That is too thin. My glaze is too thin. Hold on. Ah, there's a lot. Look at on the bottom. So if I didn't know better, if I had just dipped it like that, do you see how it's separating on my hand? And I thought that was okay. I might have used this glaze, but it would have been way too thin. Now look, when I dip my hand down in, you see these big chunks that I have? That right there is all the glaze material that has settled to the bottom. So clean my arm off. All right, and we can talk about me putting my hand in glaze materials. Uh, I don't leave it in there, I'm just dipping, and then it's right back out and I rinse it off and it's okay. You could wear gloves, but then I can't see my indent in my finger now, right? All right, so I have to keep mixing. Let's see where we are now. So often you will mix it, let it set a bit, and then mix it again. It can take a while. If I run a paint stir around the bottom edge of the bucket, you can tell if it's all mixed. Judy, that's a great suggestion. You can also use uh, like a spatula and run that around the bottom. I don't have any of those in my studio. That's, that's sad, right? I should have them. So let's check it. So we're still, we still have some materials down there that need stirring up. Um, I'm going to tell you all a story. When I was first learning, uh, my, my college professor made us mix them all by hand, just like this. So we would be sitting there, a class full of students, with our arms and buckets full of everything. Whatever it was, we put our hands in it. And he was just like, if, if, if I was going to do this for a living, I would not have you do this and I'd wear protection, but you're not going <laughs> to. Right. Some of us might. All right, this is feeling better, much better. All right, let me rinse my arm off. That water's cold. Woo! Refreshing. All right, here we go. Glaze test, much better. You can see the indent of my fingernail, and this is about the consistency of heavy cream. If with my spearmint it's a little too thin, it goes more yellow, less spearmint green. So you'll notice that. Okay, so we mixed. Woohoo! One glaze mixed. We could use this. Toilet brushes for stirring. I need to upgrade my studio glaze supplies, don't I? I think I do. So we're gonna go ahead and do a mug. We're gonna do a mug. You know what I didn't grab? I didn't grab any cups to glaze with. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm gonna do something sacrilegious. What you got? Can you buy your ton already mixed you, in smaller quantities? You can get it from Clayscapes Pottery. It'll mix up a gallon um, as brushable. You can, about a, a gallon and a quarter, I think. So yeah, it's a five pound batch, so you can get that. You can also buy it as a brushable. I'm gonna use this cup as my, usually I use a measuring cup, but I forgot to grab one. So we're gonna go ahead and, hold on. I keep my lid nearby. We're gonna pour the inside first. We'll see how messy I can be. I use a measuring cup because it has a lovely spout. And when you pour, you can control where it goes and then it doesn't run down your side. But if it does run down your side, see I just wiped it out. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and pour it out. So start your pour, keep turning, keep turning. And then you keep turning as that little bead of glaze kind of rolls around your rim. So that's the outside done. So we have the glaze on the inside. Experiment. It's gonna be gorgeous. I think we're gonna do the lake blue on top of this one. Oh no, I wanna do, I'm gonna do cobblestone. Let's do cobblestone. <laughs> that means I have to mix that one up. <laughs> so you got a toilet brush from the dollar store and it works great. Thanks, Nona, I have to do that. Um, I, I'm trying not to go out. I did actually just make this glaze the other day. <laughs> it's very heavy. So we're gonna scoop the spearmint. Sorry, spearmint, you go over there. So, 
And we're gonna mix this one up now. And we'll see, this has settled a lot. My cobblestone settles out fast. Um, this is a throwing apron and all of my aprons are split. Yes, yes. I could have pre-mixed these, I guess. I should have pre-mixed them. <laughs> so you remember when they had lead in the red? I know, like years ago. So see, we still, let's feel. Oh my gosh, so much down there. So much. I do need, I need a toilet brush. Um, I bet I can order one online if I don't want to go out. Put them in the Amazon shop. <laughs> yeah, like, that way I can just get it, right? All right, so I have to mix that one up a little bit more. And often, you know, we'll I'll mix one up and then I'll have to go ahead and mix it again during the glazing. It's just how it is. might not have the power to get the vortex. I actually think the problem is the bit. It's the speed. It's the speed. Am I going too fast? No, that that's a really heavy duty drill made for drilling deep into stuff. This so is it runs, a, it runs at a slower rate. It runs at a slower it's rate. Like a lot of torque. It's a half horsepower. Um, I can't read the rest of it. It's 120 watts, blah, blah, blah. It's a, so this is a heavy duty drill. Maybe I need a different drill. Sorry, mom. I love my drill. I'm done. I was letting you know that I killed your sound while mixing. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Kevin, for killing the sound while mixing, or else everybody would be like, I hate you. <laughs> All right. So we're going to dip the rest of this in the... So actually, a different design mixer for my drill might help. Maybe that will. Yeah, I'll... You know, this is what I've been using for ages, and because it's not broke, I haven't bothered to fix it, so... When do I scrape glaze build off off the sides? Usually after I use it, I don't do it at the beginning. And if you scrape the glaze build off up off, you need to sieve it again. So keep that in mind. If you're gonna scrape the dry chunks on the sides, you will need to sieve your glaze because if not, those dry chunks will stick to the side of your pot. So I don't disturb them until I plan to sieve it again, which often you will need to do it at least once before you use a full bucket. All right, now that I've chatted a lot, do we think the glaze is settled? So usually I like to mix and dip immediately. We did spearmint on the inside. I'm gonna do cobblestone to here, and then I'm gonna do spearmint on the rim. Dip, done. That's it. And you can actually see the glaze as it starts to dry, change from shiny to a nice matte. And you can hear it, like you'll hear little bubbles being absorbed. And then on my table, I will have this big wet sponge because this right here, wipe your bottom. So I've already waxed my bottom, but that, let me turn it over, has gotten most of the glaze off. I still have a little bit on the inside, which 
you know, we'll go back and take care of before we put it in the kiln, but that takes a lot off. So you have to get a better drill because you have a weak battery. This one is a um, powered uh, cord one, so it's good. Drill first, get a metal whisk, better than toilet brush. Oh my gosh, all these great ideas. I love it. <laughs> so a paddle for boats, you can get the ones that are small. I think so, I think you're right. All right, so we wanna wait for this to dry so that we can touch it and it won't peel off the glaze. If you have wet hands and you touch dry glaze, you oftentimes will peel it off. Let's move this bucket back. And now we're gonna grab the spearman again. So we're gonna dip it on that. And this... So I made a conscientious decision to do this. Do you see how the top, we have spearmint from here down, the top is bright blue, and then this is our overlap. That's what we have in the middle. I'm glazing this mug very similar to this. So we're just gonna have the blue on top, but if you did spearmint all the way to the rim, you would get this, just not this. So I want all three, so I want that transition. Does the drill get a lot of air bubbles going? Uh, or you're using something else, a whisk. Yeah. Uh, a whisk, I don't know if it would. There's a little bubble on top, but you can tap it. It's not, a, it's not usually a big deal. All right, so we're gonna dip this. And I could go to here, and that would be nice. But I'm actually gonna go to here. So I'm dipping about half, not quite halfway. We can say a third of the way down the pot we're gonna go. So let's dip that in, just like that. And then, again, roll it around your rim. And this will be in Sunday's kiln opening. So you can come see how this glaze turns out on this mug. I'm gonna have a lot of mugs in the kiln, by the way. I think there'll be a mug sale coming soon. I think we're gonna have to. So I'm just gonna let this dry upside down and I just keep kind of rolling it like this. There, I think it's settled enough. That looks good. So that's it. I will not have to do another layer. This is it. This is all that I use. So what's the sub of G200? Uh, Teresa Ann, it's Mahavir Feldspar. Laguna makes it. It's called Mahavir. So if little bubbles develop on the drying glaze, this is not too thick. No. The spearmint likes to be this thickness. And here it is on a casserole dish. Let me show you, you can kind of see. Here's a little thinner, here's a little thicker because I had let my glaze settle a little bit. When I went to glaze it, I didn't remix it. I just dipped it and thought we'd be good. So you can actually see that. You can see as I dipped it down in, right here the glaze was thicker. Here it's a little thinner. You see the yellow coming out, right? Right in here, right in there. But the spearmint, it's, it's a good glaze. This is not too thick. This is where you want it, right here. So this will just um, dry and go in the kiln. And these are all at cone five. That's what I, I do them. This, they can go to six though. Just test them to make sure they don't run. Now I thought we would do a plate. And I think I have, I do. I've got a plate over here. It's not waxed. Well, that, this will be a fun thing for me. We will do a plate. It's not waxed. I will scrub the bottom. You wanted the amber ginkgo mug, but couldn't get on the side. I know it was crazy. Um, so I think that I think that this time I won't have any of those, but I will have a bunch of my carved mugs. So I just rub them to make them smooth. Um, is there a point I feel I have to save the game? So do I just rub the glazed drips? I just, I just let them be. Is that what you're asking? I just would let them be on this. There's not really anything to rub on. And if there's a bubble, um, if it's really bad, if there's a bubble that's really big and I can see the glaze under it, what I would do is dip my finger back in the glaze and do a drop of glaze that matches on the piece. 
and if you just have a big crater sort of thing and you can still see glaze under it, you could smooth it out a little bit, but you don't really want to turn this glaze into dust in your studio. You don't want that happening, right? Uh, we can pour it over or pour over the mug. Mahavir, M-A-H-A-V-I-R. I think you got it right there. If you search up Mahavir, you'll be good. I promise. You'll. So uh, Joe rubs them and it works. I usually leave mine alone, but yeah, you could rub them and see what happens. So we have a plate and you have some fun that you can do with plates. And I will just have to scrub the foot unless, do I have a waxed one? Let me just look quickly. Um, ooh, what's this? Ha! Oh, the wax is coming off. Okay, here's something. This I waxed about two months ago. Do you see? The wax is just coming off. If this happens to you, what you need to do is you need to rub all this wax off and reapply. Don't dip this in your piece because this wax will come off and you'll have little dry flakes of wax in your glaze. So don't dip this in your glaze. Yeah. Don't do that. I don't want you to do that. So I guess uh, uh, we're going to wait a sec while I wax. Hold on. I've got my wax over here. Y'all just sit tight. If I had some music to play for you, we would have that going on. <laughs> I've got wax. I've got my brush from earlier when I was waxing and we're just going to super quick wax this. And while that's drying, maybe we'll see if I got something else waxed and ready to go and we can use that. So when I do brush on glazes, I usually just wax quickly on the rim. When I do dip and pour glazes, cause I don't want to be scrubbing my glaze off. I will actually take the time and do the side here because unlike a brush on glaze, Dipping glazes tend to run more and stick to your shelves. So you want to not, I shouldn't do this over your bucket of glaze, by the way, um, but you know, here I am doing it. So you want to make sure you leave that foot ring unglazed and you can glaze the inside. You can glaze right up to the foot ring, but you don't want to get the foot ring. And I totally just got glaze on the side right there. Mm. Hold on. So there'll be an area that may or may not have glaze. We will see. This is a test plate. If it doesn't make it, I am not crushed. Okay, that was a super fast glaze job. Not my best. But, you know, we're, we're pressed for time here. We want to get stuff done. So... We've got a couple choices when you're glazing a plate. A little plate like this, I will usually use glazing tongs and just dip it in. Do I rinse my bisque ware? I will wipe it down, so I will take a clean sponge. I'll take a clean sponge and usually just this. Wipe any dust off and, you know, of course, the back, the back too. Same as I would if I was doing a brush on, so you can see the wetness has to dry on that right there. The wax is Mr. Marks, but I have to tell you, I've been using the Spectrum Wax lately from Clayscapes, and I'm absolutely loving it. It's just not right here. It's down there across the room, so I couldn't get there. Did I have a few drops of wax into my bucket would be very sad, wouldn't it? <laughs> so we have a couple choices. We could do some fun things with this. We can use my glaze tongs right here, and you can hold your plate like this, and you can dip the whole thing in. And for a plate this size, I would actually, as long as the plate, here are the sides of the bucket, will fit between the sides of the bucket, I will dip them. That's how I do most plates. You can pour it on. So we could do a pouring, and you just, maybe we should do a big plate. Do you guys want a big plate? Do I have one ready? Ooh, that's the question. Hold on, let this one dry. Let's see if I've got a big plate. We could make a big, oh, I got that one, but that's the one with the glue wax coming off. Um, oh, that's for another project. Ah, all the plates I have, have have been designated use somewhere else. I think we're gonna have to do a little plate. 
I mean, I could do pouring with a little plate. It just isn't quite the same thing. It doesn't, you don't need to do it. Um, unless, hold on. Hey, Kev, <laughs> wanna take this sponge and this plate and go scrub that wax off it? <laughs> and then um, I will glaze the big plate and we'll do a pouring glaze. I'm just wiping that off. Okay, here, you wanna take this? And get as much of that wax off as you can. Thanks. So he's gonna go see about that and while that's happening, I will dip this one. And I'm just gonna not mix up another glaze. I'm just gonna use this, co this cobblestone back here. I will dip it in that one first. And then I mix, uh, I'll mix it up. And then I'll do spearmint. And usually when I glaze, I get the floor filthy. All right, we got this, there we go. We're gonna dip this one and then we will do a pour. We're good as far as thickness on that. Glazed tongues, there you are. So I'm gonna do the whole plate in and out. Can you all see okay? You all can see? You can see. Okay, dip and out, just like that. Then I'm just gonna hold it, hold it, hold it, and then I'm gonna grab it by the foot and release, like that. Clean off your glazed tongs right away because you'll forget, and then you'll grab them to glaze something else and you'll put a glaze on it you don't want. So this has to dry, so I have to let this set up for a bit. Can you wash the wax off? No, it has to be fired off. Sometimes you can sand the wax off, but um, if you get wax where you don't want it, let's see how, let me see if I can find that spot. Oh, you know what? The glaze has covered that spot, so we might get away with it. We might. All right. Can I grab a sponge? How's that going over there? You got that plate for me? Yay! We'll do a pouring. I won't worry about the wax, waxing the bottom of this, but we'll pour. So we'll let this one dry, but what I like to do before, and I didn't do a great waxing job. I was fast, so I didn't take my time. The inside looks kind of messy, right? But, you know, for the speed of broadcasting, let me do a pour. Oh, I really wish I had a measuring cup for this. Well, can't always get what you want. <laughs> I'm gonna get a different cup though, because that one's had the spearmint glaze in. And if a little bit of one glaze gets dropped in the other, it's usually okay, unless you're using a clear or white glaze. Just keep in mind, that could be not good. Yeah, you can re-bisque fire. All right, let's see. Before I do this, I have to work smarter, and I need to cover my spearmint glaze, because I'm telling you, Pouring glaze can get messy. Often I will have a big, I have a big plastic bucket that's really wide. It's like a plastic wash tub. And I will use that when I'm doing this so that my glaze will run into that and then I can pour it back into here. I don't know, it's out, it's out in, the, in the kiln shed. So I don't have it. So we are gonna go without. It's okay. We can do this. It's all right. Hand torch the heat, the wax off. Yeah, I'm just gonna let it be, but we're pouring the outside now. I'm going right up to the foot ring and I'm just pouring right on it. And you'll see we have a lot running down the back of this cup. Normally I would use a measuring cup. I would not use this tumbler. <laughs> but a tumbler is what I had, so it's what I'm using. You make do. Clean that off. And so you let this side dry and then we will pour the front. So that's the back done. And we got a little bit of splash back here. You can just scrub that off. And let's go back to the plate, the smaller plate, and we'll finish that and I'll show you what I like to do. So we're gonna uncover the spearmint now and we'll mix that one back up. We're still gonna use this in a minute, but we need this one. We have five more minutes. 
So we are going to dip it one third and one third and leave the middle the cobblestone. So one third and then we'll wipe this clean. Take care of that right now so I don't have to come back. I will check it before firing but I don't have to worry so much. And now you have to let that dry so we can do the other side. So we'll set this back down and we'll switch back to the big plate. <laughs> this is how it goes. This is why glazing takes a long time. And usually I have my buckets lined up, not under a camera, so it doesn't really, I don't have to shuffle them around. And I'll have multiple pieces staged, you know. There's, there's a process. Okay, this is always fun. You ready? You can pour into another empty bucket, yes. And usually I do. Usually I have a great big one that I put in here. Usually I have one that's much wider. It's about a 24 inch wide plastic wash tub. But it's currently out in my kiln shed and I'm not gonna go get it. So we're gonna go messy way. It could get very messy. Ready? Start at the center, pour, and just swirl it all the way around. And some may get on your forearm. Swirling it back around. And there you go. So we've glazed the plate. We will need to wipe the foot ring because there's some little drips sometimes but that's basically how you do a plate that wouldn't fit. Um, to be fair, this plate probably would have fit in here, so I could have done the dipping if I wanted to, but that's one glaze color. If I want another glaze, I will probably hand dip the edges like we are doing with the smaller plate, or I will brush on. That's how I applied, let me grab this. This one here that I did in the cobblestone, this casserole dish, I dipped and poured the glaze everywhere except the spearmint I actually brushed on with a brush. One coat, brush it on the rim right there. Easy to do. Need to do this in the bathtub. You might, it's, I'm telling you, it's messy. This is why I am in the galoshes, right? This is why we got the rubber boots on because we're gonna make a mess. So we can actually scooch these cobblestone back because I'm pretty sure I'm done with that for right now. And let's grab that little plate back and see how we're doing. All right, so just like when we are brushing on a glaze, when you're applying multiple layers, you do have more of a risk for running. So I will make sure I really scrub this well before I put it in the kiln. And we're still too wet. I'm gonna see if I can do it gingerly. Carefully stir our glaze. Grab it from the sides, yeah. Okay, dip, done. And so just hold it for a sec so it can continue dripping. I prefer dipping my glaze when I'm doing a plate, not pouring. You know, sometimes you don't have a choice. Sometimes you have to pour if a piece is really big, or you can always spray your glaze on if you have a um, sprayer. And we'll do, we'll do more of that, we'll do that. Ooh, look how good I am. Look at that. Ha, are you impressed? It's almost exactly in the center, but it doesn't have to be perfect because that's part of what makes it awesome. All right, so there's a couple things we glazed. Um, let me, you want me to show you quickly how I would apply the glaze to that big plate? Let me do that quickly. So this is exactly what I would do. I have a rim on the plate, I can see. I've got a sumi brush and then I'm just gonna do you see how when I start though, I start back before where I stopped and then I just pull it along like that. And blend it through. And I just kind of, do you see how I'm one handing kind of, like it's a pizza pie, I'm sort of tossing it around there. Glazing gets crazy, no joke. And I won't put any on the outside. I don't wanna risk it running. I am putting a second coat cause I just want to. <laughs> Maybe I'll do the very outside of the rim right here. So this will go in the kiln. I am gonna have a kiln full of pots, pretty exciting. Just from a few days of demoing. All right, so there you have it. This is uneven, right? Guess what, it'll melt and it'll look great anyways. So clean that off. And I think we're good to 
switch back to the front view. I gotta fix my phone. My phone's in the way. I hate that when that happens. All right, we'll flip the phone up. Instagram folks, light shining in the window. I see that, that's pretty bright. All right, so I wanna check and make sure I've caught, I'm coordinated. <laughs> yeah, oh, lots of practice. So this is a Sumi brush, S-U-M-I. It is a Japanese or Chinese calligraphy brush is what it will be, will be called. So you'll see it listed as that. And it'll be in the calligraphy or painting section of hobby and craft stores. And it's a really nice one for getting fine details. Also, ooh, we could have done a fun bamboo. Let's do a bamboo. Hold on. I should have done that. Where's my spearmint? I don't know how well this will show up, but if you do this on a celadon, like if you make your own celadon, and you do with iron oxide wash, you could do some cute little bamboo um, leaves or just regular things. Or let's just see if we can mess this up a bit. I haven't done this in years. Go that way. All right, let's see if I can remember how to do a leaf. I think I can remember how to do a leaf. <sighs> Maybe. One down, one over. Not too bad. Put one there. Oh, better. See? Much better. So the more abstract you go, the better they can be. This plate ooh, is definitely a test plate. <laughs> Does it look like bamboo? Not particularly, but yeah. Brush work on the surface. And we'll see what happens when it fires. It might just look like little blobs. It might just look like little blobs on it. I don't know. We're going to see. You got yours from my Amazon. You will, you will love this brush. When you try it, you will love it. So here's the one we did. We poured the glaze on this, and then we brushed the rim, right? We did the mug, which was a straight dip and pour. Fastest way you can glaze a mug ever is this right here. I tell you, you, can't, you cannot go faster. Once you mix up your glaze, this is the quickest way to glaze pots. And if you don't have any carving or anything on there, even if you have beautiful texture, this is still a very fast way because you can use a celadon, right? And that would work. And then we have the little baby plate. We did the dipping right here that has that cute little two thirds, one third sort of thing going on. Just, just playing with it. You've seen the bamboo done and the dragonfly, right? So if you want to practice doing things like the bamboo that I did, practice on newspaper and water. Just newsprint and water, the water will show up and you can practice doing like a bamboo. When I was an undergrad student, before I discovered carving, I was into brushwork and it's particularly Chinese brushwork. Um, Sung Dynasty pots have a lot of brushwork on them. If you want to check out the history of Chinese brushwork, um, there's some really dry historical books that you won't want to read that I have. <laughs> but um, just look up Chinese brushwork. Sung Dynasty, S-U-N-G, sometimes it's spelled S-O-N-G, but look that up and you can see some gorgeous brushwork, usually with iron oxide, sometimes more recently with cobalt. So that's kind of fun, right? Lines of the darker overglaze to add a shadow. It might have to be, because I don't think it's gonna show, I think they're, they're too close, but we'll see when I unload it on Sunday. All right, any other questions? We are gonna do the giveaway at four o'clock. So I'll be back at four o'clock. I'm gonna change my shirt. I'm putting on my Clay Share Con shirt because it's here. There'll be no apron. I want you to just be sitting down. Don't, it's okay. I won't be wearing an apron. Y'all okay with that? <laughs> I'm just gonna be in my Clay Share Con shirt. I'm gonna clean all this glaze up in the next uh, 25 minutes and I will have everything ready. And I'm gonna be giving away 10 Amoco glaze prizes three of my textured rollers, a year's premium membership to Clay Share Prime, woohoo! And if you're already a member, we will extend your membership for a year. That's so when it's up for renewal, you'll just get an extra year. So nobody will be like, ah, oh, oh no, I'm a member. Well, you'll just get a whole another year. That's all. From when yours expires, not, not from today. So if you've already subscribed and you've got six months left, when the six months comes up, we will make sure yours auto renews for free for a year. So how's that? Awesome, right? And then I've got something else I'm gonna give you guys, but I'm not telling you until the giveaway. So I have to come back and see it. 
All right, everyone. I will see you at four o'clock. Bye.